Howdy folks, Dave of Chaos Crafting here. So today I'm going to start on a new project and it's going to be a watchtower. An awesome element for any role play or tabletop game. As you can see, I've started out with a sketch. Nothing too detailed, just something to organize my thoughts, to get a, a design that I'm going to cut out of the foam. See, I'm gonna start with this large base down here at the bottom. It's going to be the, the center point that this watchtower is going to be mounted on. I figure I'll do some large corner blocks, bevel it out some to give it some interest. Eventually I'll figure out what I'm gonna do for the top. I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a crenellation or if I'm gonna do a watch house. We'll see. For now, I'll just focus on the base. We'll try to get that done today. This, it's a process, work with me. To start, I'm gonna mill down some foam. Now my terrain typically has half inch tall bricks or stones. So I'm going to cut down some half inch thick XPS foam panels. Once you have that broken down, go ahead and cut out 20 inch and a half by inch and a half squares out of the half inch thick foam panels. I will use these to create the large corner buttresses. Here I'm using a woodworking triangle to cut some clean edges for this foam. Alrighty, we're gonna bevel this cornerstone. Now you see how I've placed a red mark in this corner? That's important. And I've placed a mark on the side where I'm going to align the hot wire. Start by loosening up your Proxon's wire. It's a black knob on the top and on the side. You'll slide it back the arm until it aligns with the red mark on the side. Once it is aligned, tighten up your wire. Make sure that it is tight on the bar and get ready to cut.
using a very sharp X-Acto blade, start to carve out the mortar lines between the layers of foam. You may hit a little bit of hot glue. That's okay, take your time, cut through it. Your lines don't have to be perfectly straight. A little bit of uh, curve gives it character. I'm only cutting in about a millimeter. I'm creating a V groove. And I'm basically defining these stone slabs to uh, look like they were carved as opposed to being just foam. Once you have your mortar lines carved out, go ahead and define your vertical brick line. Uh, brick line is not the best word, but it's the vertical cuts in the stone. It's hard to see with the camera not focusing here, but this is simply where you take your ball of aluminum foil and you create a texture by rolling the foil on the foam. Now it's time to mark out the brick pattern on the walls carve them out just like we did with the cornerstones and texture them up. just using a standard alternating brick pattern and half inch tall bricks. You can do whatever pattern you like, any size you like. The smaller the brick or the smaller the stonework, the longer it takes to carve out. This is a texture roller for epoxy putty. You can use it on XPS foam and it does provide some decent texture. A bit light to my liking. I hear there's other rollers that are more aggressive. I'm gonna look into them. On to assembly putting together the cut pieces with some hot glue. Careful, hot glue is by definition hot.
one thing to notice here. See how the top of the wall aligns with the mortar line on the cornerstone? That's when you know you've got your measurements correct and assembly is going as planned. We will need to notch out one half inch from the corners of this piece of material. This will allow it to slip into place. Dag Nabbit, the material I used for the top was greater than half an inch in thickness. I'll have to correct this. I cut the top stone in half. I figured it would be easier to, to trim off just a little bit if it was smaller. Made sure it was exactly half an inch thick dry, assemble, and success. Okay, we can keep moving. Okay, time to uh, get to the home stretch here. Now we need to mark out the brick pattern for the top of this base. In doing this, I noticed that the cut I put down the center does not align with any of the brickwork I want. So I'll need to patch it up with some spackle to make it disappear. Once again, doing some carving, knocking down any of the edges along the side, make it look a little worn. Then I'll be carving out the bricks across the top and doing some texture. Again, you could do some interesting patterns for flagstones. You don't have to stick to just a simple square. I, I'm doing it this way because it, it, it helps with, uh, with movement if I'm using one inch squares. I really enjoy this part. Uh, I know it may sound weird, but I, I enjoy carving out the little squares, making it look like stone. I guess that's, it's pulling off the big, the big magic trick, making something look like what it's not.
let's do something about this crack. You could use this technique on any crack you want to have disappear. I couldn't find my spackle, but I did find this grout. It's both relatively inexpensive, something I had left over from my kitchen remodel. Just take a little dab and push it into the crack. The stuff can be cleaned up with water. It'll dry overnight. Easy peasy. With this, I'm calling today's build done. Got the base all finished. Next time I'll start working on the tower and hopefully by then I'll figure out if I want a house or a castle crinolation. As always, if you like this, let me know by hitting the like button. Subscribe, I, I love to see that notification. Peace.